Hello everybody and welcome back down into the dungeon for the Sunday look at everything that's still growing on down here. Not a lot left of the overwintered peppers, so we'll start there. That'll make it a nice quick clip. And uh, take it on to what started for next year and of course the aquaponic herb garden that's, well, it's a year-round thing, isn't it? So, yeah, let's take a look at the overwintered stuff and uh, get the party going, as it were. To me, I'd have to say the mouse melon, while not technically an overwintered pepper, is the most amazing plant that I brought in this fall. I really, really did not expect this to survive, let alone thrive. And it's basically turning into a dungeon ivy. It's just attaching itself to everything. And I'm kind of tempted to just let it do that. And, and granted, it would never go back outside again. So unless I take the time to pollinate it from one flower to the next, male and female, with uh, most of these cucumbers and, and melons and such. Um, so unless I take the time to pollinate it with a paintbrush, I'd never get any more mouse melons out of this particular plant. But it really would make for kind of an interesting ivy effect if I just let it crawl around. So I'd be interested in some feedback on that one. Let's see, we'll start with the shelf here. Spider plants. These are not the happiest of the spider transplants, but I, I have faith. They'll, they'll martin up sooner or later. See in the back here. This poor flaming caddy desperately needs to be transplanted. I don't think they like these terracotta pots because this is suffering more than any other caddy in the house. So you just have to see. These ones in the plastic planters, well, so-called, they're party cups, but they seem to be doing all right. Nice little clippings. And then there's a whole bunch of cuttings from that lawyer's lobby plant. If anybody knows what this actually is, that is information I would love to have. I'm just, just throwing that out there. Uh, still on the shelf, we've got the mint cubby. That mint there, looking a little scraggly. Probably about time for a, a mow job. We'll take it down to just above the top of that planter. See how it does. But it's got its own, and forgive me for the spectrum here, very strange little... 6 watt, I believe, gardening light that I found online for like 10 bucks. Figured I have to give that a try. You guys know me and the lighting thing. But, let's see, below that we've got a couple of Astrid's, some more flaming caddies. Those things are everywhere. And then up here, we've got one of those Diefenbachia cuttings from the other day. Of the cuttings, I'm going to say this one's probably the happiest looking at the moment. But it's only been a couple of days, so they haven't exactly had a lot of opportunity to form roots. i got a Got to learn to cultivate some patience, you know. Spider plant. Oh, black lace elderberry. It's much happier than its counterpart outside, I assure you. Looking down, we got the Diefenbachia corner here. Little lemon tree. This definitely looks happier with growing up as compared to growing out. I thought the, the light kind of beside it would make for more of a bush type plant, but doesn't appear to be the case. Oh, our multi planting. That's looking pretty happy. That almost looks like some new growth there. Looks like some extension on the growth there. So I'm going to say that's a good thing. Poor little Band-Aid Diefenbachia. We'll give that one some time. Coffee plant there. You know, this is a much sadder looking Diefenbachia cutting. But this one, if you recall, is that big chubby U bit of the, the, the trunk, stalk, stem. I don't know. So hopefully it's got enough moisture that this... We'll quit being so floppy. We'll see. We'll see. That one beside it, not looking too bad. This is kind of tragic. That is not a happy looking rosemary plant. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to bring that back. So I'm really, really glad I got some cuttings off of it. We have yet another dead overwintered pepper here. I believe when this started off, it was one of the ahi penic varieties, but hard to tell at this point. The sage, not quite as uh, traumatized as the rosemary, but again, not looking really, really happy. Transitioning back indoors, I think, has gone kind of south, we'll say, for these guys. The MOA Scotch Bonnet getting a little taller. Not seeing any flowers or anything on there yet. Got a flower in the yellow scorpion, but it's a dandelion flower, so that's not quite the one we're going for. My little Christmas trees down there. Moved the uh, larger red pine up into the landing. Decorated it with a couple of crocheted peppers that Shocks made. You can check out my uh, G Plus profile page if you want to take a look at those. Ah, the El Oro de Ecuador. 
digging on this plant. Still got a few peppers on there for me, so that's nice. Paint brushing the aphids into, uh, oh, we've got some there. The fish will be happy to see those. Paint brushing the aphids into a larger cup and then dumping those into the fish tank has worked really, really well. So, that, as strange as it is, has been one of the best solutions for the aphid problem I've encountered. It's goldfish. Kind of atypical for me though, isn't it? I don't really ever solve a problem in the normal fashion. But, whatever, as long as the problem is solved, that's all I really care about. And I got some happy goldfish out of the deal, so that's, that's not too bad either. Surprisingly though, the best source of aphid snacks this year has been these little tiny seedlings. And, uh, <laughs> I have to say, the fact that they are being treated to that brushing every couple of days, Basically, once I see an aphid on one of these guys, it's like, okay, everybody gets brushed. But I think it's making for sturdier seedlings than I've previously had, because it's kind of like that wind effect, right? They've got to become that little bit stronger to deal with the flicking. Oops. <laughs> Doesn't make the cups any sturdier. They're still, they're still shot glass size. You know, what do you do? Oh, look at that. See what that means? That means they're getting a paint brushing today. But, you know, I have had a great survival rate so far with my seedlings compared to last year especially. Last year was horrifying. And uh, the year before that, the first year we got here wasn't so bad, but I want to do better. Got the kale starts and uh, some of my little spider plant transplants. Weaponized peanut butter hasn't been uh, activated yet. I don't see a flashing green light in there anyway. Let's just double check. Nope, peanut butter's still there. It was a few days between the last couple of visits, so I'm waiting, hoping it'll get nice and hungry and go, Oh, peanut butter, yeah, man. Whack, zap. It's as cruel as my genocide on the aphids, but you know what? I don't care. We, got, uh, we call this thing Azazel because, have you ever seen Fallen? Um, let me tell you about the time this plant almost died, okay? We used to sit in the windowsill in this little cup here and uh, not these cuttings of it but the original cutting of it and it sat there for months and months and months and it didn't grow it didn't produce a stem um, and I was cleaning up I was actually wiping off dead aphids and you know that sticky residue they leave right anyway I was wiping off the window still trying to get it clean and I knocked this sucker over bounced off the back of the coffee maker had to be recovered from behind the filing cabinet that the coffee maker is on and uh, then it got not again not this one but the one that's upstairs in the windowsill got replanted and all of a sudden it just took off like for some reason that dramatic traumatic event startled it into life and it has become this thriving plant with this massive root system upstairs and these were a couple of offshoots I figured I'd try and clone it okay let's be completely honest this was an individual offshoot that I thought I would try and clone and I broke it so I put them both in here and it looks like they are um, kind of rooting this is another one, kind of like the lawyer's lobby. We don't actually know what kind of plant this is. So if anybody out there has some info on that, again, greatly appreciated. The roots that it does shoot are incredibly fine. Uh, next time I do a windowsill update, I'll try and make sure I show you guys that. But Very, very fine, very fine roots. Um, so I'm, I'm hesitant to transplant these guys until... I see something sticking out of the bottom. I want to know that there's more on the base of these things. But I want my cup back because it's supposed to have peppers in there. And I bought four packs of those things, which is 88 little cups. And I've got... That's what I've got left, unused. So that, that doesn't work for me. Because I've already got... These two uh, pepper seedlings here were rescued, actually, from the dehydrator pepper seedlings. So I don't know what they are other than that they grew here. So that'll be fun but anyway you know two cups for every pepper seedling because I've got my outer cup and the inner cup with the draining and all that so yeah 88 little cups is only 44 little peppers and I can fit 35 peppers into one of those flats so you do the math I don't feel like it today uh, we got our tomato seedlings here these are gonna have to get cut back or something maybe I'll clone the top of this cut it root it let the bottom go do the same there do that all winter with these. I don't know. Clearly need to water them, though. 
I do love that smell though when you knock around a tomato plant. Mmm, delicious, delightful, and all kinds of other wonderful D words. We got the tricolor sage, the variegated sage. Seems to be doing okay. Again, it needs to be watered, much like the tomatoes. This little corner doesn't seem to get much attention. I blame the tomatoes. I have no justification for it, but I do it anyway. Uh, we got our Ahi Fantasy over here. This is kind of spread out, so something must have nipped the growing top off of that and it decided to bush out. But that's cool. I mean, we can almost not see the cup underneath it, which is great. It's almost a year old, so whatever there. We got the bad brains here. It's looking kind of crappy, but I've been taking bigger leaves off of it that were really, really crappy and I'm kind of hoping that it'll fill up. Might be getting at a point of needing to put some actual nutrients into these though, which I still haven't done. And look at this poor reaper, right? So something has to be done there, but these plants are doing better because again, every time I see an aphid anywhere, all the pepper plants that I can pick up get picked up and flicked over the fish tank. So, got this little tiny sort of cracky thing going on. It's one of the random mystery peppers from the compost. Somehow it's almost more fun when I don't know what these things are. Oh, this one's finally starting to get some roots too. Very nice, very nice. Diefenbachia. Not looking happy, but it's got a lot of stem in some very deep water. So I'm very hopeful. What do we have here? This is one of the random mystery peppers. Some of those randoms seem to be the stars of the show this year. Aha! In the flat, we have a few things popping up in here. Let's get that out of the way. I'd have to say the most noticeable is this section here. And these are the Kang Star... Oh, I had it a second ago. I knew what it was. Yeah, okay, so these are the Kangstar Lemon Starburst. One, two, three, four, it looks like, coming up there. Then over here, we have the Lemon, lemon Habaneros. So there's two, at least four, six, looks like, coming up there. So that's awesome. And then I thought earlier, I had something coming up there. So this is actually spreading a little quicker than I had expected. And I still don't have anything coming up from those Trinidad Scorpion Red seeds that I got from Pepper North. But I got those seeds a few years ago, so in all fairness, I don't know, I guess they may have expired. And or they might just need a little extra time, because I think it was Rev there was going off. About the hotter the pepper, basically the longer that sucker is going to take to sprout for you. And I've heard a lot of people talk about just how amazing the sprout rate is for the Kang Star variety, so... That didn't surprise me. I don't know if they're super hots or not, but they're a, kind of a sexy looking little pepper. Either way, I was kind of giggling. With both of these varieties that are doing so well, yellow peppers. So, yeah, it'd be nice to see some red peppers sprouting, though. I mean, I don't want to be all particular or nothing, but some red chilies would be nice. A little more on the standard. Got another houseplant shelf that's developing here. It's the Marble Queen Pythos? Pothos? I don't know. It's so another one I'd be happy to take some feedback on. I think I probably just cut the vine and root that. But if anybody has done that successfully or unsuccessfully, it's information I could use. It looks so lonely in that planter though, so maybe rooting a couple more in there wouldn't be too bad. More of the flaming caddy cuttings everywhere. Out of all the types of planters, you know, plastic, styrofoam, terracotta, Terracotta looks like the worst choice for those plants. Spider plants along the back, happily producing oxygen all over our house. Gotta like that. One of those little rosemary cuttings. Hopefully, we can keep that alive because it looks like that one with the wintered peppers is dead. And then thinking of rosemary cuttings, hopefully this one will root. I'm not gonna pull it up just yet. This sage is doing all right, a little spindly, but Still alive and well. Got another little sage cutting down here. You can kind of see the new growth. Well, I can with my naked eye. There we go. This light is not particularly um, conductive to videos. This basil, I think, on its way out, but that's okay because we've got parsley moving into this uh, herb planter. I'm going to bring the parsley down from the windowsill garden as well. 
Got the oregano growing back here, some nice dark green, some suspiciously light green. The gurgle of the fountain as it turns on. So I guess we're going to be quick finishing this off. The three of the mint. The chickens are absolutely loving this. Uh, so are the fish too actually, so everybody wins there. This little spider plant shouldn't be here, but it looks like it's finally throwing some roots, so I can consider moving it soon. And the kale! Kale does well in an aquaponic garden, but the problem with this particular kale planting is that the aphids love it, and I can't exactly shake these guys over the fish tank. Well, I mean, I could. I could pull them out, shake them off, and then replant them, but that's just, that's going to be traumatizing on the plant, so. I might pull these guys out just so I can feed the aphids to the fish. I don't know, well, you can see them climbing up that little stem there, but I see them far too well. I'm like a cop dog though, I'm trained to see aphids at 100 miles at this point. And that's pretty much a look at most of what's still growing on down in the basement here. Uh, the remnants from 2018, some of them from 2017, one of them from 2016. Um, and yeah, what's uh, growing forward to 2019. So it's, it's going to be an interesting season next year. It's going to be an interesting winter season down here coming up. So stick around. I am really, really curious to see just how much of my garden I can have ready by June 1st. Yeah, that's right. I gotta wait till June. Anyway, I will see you guys in here until then. And, uh, well, I guess we'll be out there on the farm channel. But if you really like snow, hey, check out the farm channel. There's lots of snow there. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Take care, everybody.